Good day, I'm Dr. T, welcome to my office. And today I'd like to talk about personal protective equipment. Okay, so as chemists, we are gonna be working with things that, you know, they do have some risks to them. Uh, obviously, you know, certain things are more risky than others. In a teaching setting, we're gonna pare it down. Uh, but it's not going to be zero risk. Uh, most of the time, as long as you respect them, kind of like, you know, cooking with a knife, it's not going to hurt you. But, you know, things can go wrong. So what we're going to do is make sure we have at least one or two lines of defense in case anything does go wrong. Now, first line of defense, or one of the line of defense, I shouldn't say first, it's really the last, is let's look at eyes. Eyes are squishy. They are very, very vulnerable to chemical and physical attack. So we want to protect them. Now, I'm wearing glasses right now. Now, this is going to protect me from a direct blast, but this isn't really good enough. Now, for starters, I'm also not wearing contacts, even though I do need prescription lenses. Contacts are actually going to make things worse than if you weren't wearing anything. Uh, because if you get a chemical in your eye, what you're going to need to do is run over to an eye wash station or to a sink and flush out your eye. Well, if you got contacts in there, that's going to make it a lot harder. So starters, first level, you know, well into the zeroth level, don't wear contacts, wear glasses. Now, glasses by themselves aren't quite good enough. Uh, some models you can get side shields to slip on, and that will protect you if the chemical comes this way. So like right now, chemical comes in this way, that doesn't help me at all. If I get side shields, and this particular pair has some, but they're not with me currently, then those, that will protect me at least a moniker uh, of protection. Now, if I want to go up another level, or I don't want to do the side shields, I can get slip-on goggles. These, by the way, definitely a nice approach, really adds another layer of protection. They seal mostly around the face. Uh, don't trust a top hit, so you never pour above your head because this top seal isn't particularly good. Uh, it's going to do its best, but, you know, don't let it come down on your head. Uh, the vents are all baffled in such a way that there's no direct line of sight. Uh, into your eye, this is going to prevent a splash. So these are much better protection, although you will find that they are far less comfortable. So most of the time, most chemists end up going with the side shield, and but these guys, things get worse. Now, you could add on things like face masks, etc. Uh, I work with fairly benign chemicals, so I'm not going to go for that. Uh, once again, respirator, excel, etc. Now, of course, if you're like myself, uh, respirator is not going to work well because of the beard. Mustache usually is fine. Beard's a little bit of a problem with respirator. Uh, but my goal has been, you know, try and avoid ever needing one of those things. Uh, now, next layer, uh, obviously the clothes I'm wearing, and I'm not really going to try and do a fashion show. My office isn't set up for this. Uh, but I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. This is really a good idea. Uh, usually most labs will require at least a short sleeve. Uh, but honestly, long sleeve is a good idea. Right now I'm wearing a synthetic fiber. If there was any risk of fire, I would not be wearing this. I would be going straight cotton wool would be fine too. Synthetic fibers will melt. That is bad. Organic fibers tend to burn, which is not desirable, but it's a lot better than melting. Uh, obviously also a heavy, especially a heavy uh, organic based one or a heavy cotton. <laughs> heavy cotton is usually fairly resistant to assorted chemicals, etc. Not perfectly though. Um, you can get different, you know, uh, appropriate coverings. Uh, I've got long pants on, I've got socks, I have shoes. If I stand up, and you know, I did this, there is literally no skin below my wrist slash uh, neck. Everything is covered all the way to the floor uh, with clothing. Shoes are leather. Um, it depends on which school of thought you're in is how much that's a big deal, but definitely leather or some of your plastics are going to give you a lot better pr protection than the cloths. Uh, the main thing, though, is that these are solid. These are not Crocs. They're not, um, uh, you know, a, a sandal of some sort. Uh, so that, once again, there is no skin exposed. I've got pants on. They don't have uh, rips in them. Uh, ladies, you know, a long dress is usually perfectly fine as well. Uh, but you need to have, when you're working with chemicals, 
Uh, especially, at least, you know, even if you're going a short sleeve, you know, your hands like this, still imagine nothing below your neck is bare skin. You've got at least one layer. Now, if I'm working in the lab, I'm a little bit more concerned about what I'm working with, or I'm working with a lot of chemicals constantly, I can throw on a lab coat. Um, depends on what I've got for the lab coat. Obviously, the same fire safety issue comes on. Uh, most lab coats, they're not bulletproof vests. They're not going to make you impermeable to uh, chemicals, but they are going to give you an extra layer of protection. Typically speaking, in teaching lab, we don't usually use them that much uh, because, once again, we're not using them enough and we're not using, uh, you know, if you destroy a shirt, oh well. Um, they cost about the same as lab coats. So as long as you only destroy one shirt, you're usually fine. Uh, they're usually, you think of them as keeping your clothes clean. Now, if you are working with chemicals a lot, they are very helpful to keep the chemicals in the lab. Uh, I'm not wearing my lab coat right now because my lab coat is uh, at, at my work office next to my, my lab area. Uh, of course, notice the recording date, hence I'm not actually at my work office. This is the home. Uh, and so those don't go home with you on a regular basis. Obviously, if it's a teaching lab, then it's still going home with you, so it defeats the entire purpose. Uh, typically, those would be laundered by your company, uh, and that way it keeps the chemicals away from your home. Now, the next one, and I have to go figure out where the other one went. Here it is. Gloves. Uh, these are going to be huge for us as chemists. So what I'm going to do, I've got a pair of gloves. Um, my the school I teach at currently, as of recording, hopefully that'll be the same for a while. Uh, we provide them for you. Um, obviously, if you this if you're doing a lab, one of the online courses, doing it at home, you'll have to provide them yourself. And frankly, I, I keep a pile of these at my house because they're useful, if only for making meatloaf. Anyway, so the way you put on gloves, uh, one typically you want to get the nitrile uh, gloves. Those tend to work a little bit better. Uh, than the latex ones. So I'm taking the glove, I'm simply shoving my hand into it. This is easy. This is the easy part. I can simply slip on the gloves. Now, once I have done this, I am not touching my face. That is just, no, I'm not touching my face. In fact, I'm not touching me. I'm also not turning around, grabbing my keyboard and messing with this. I am wearing gloves to protect me from weird gunk that gets on them. That gunk, whatever chemical I'm worried about, now is on the gloves. If I now mess with the keyboard, it's on the keyboard. Now I take the gloves off, mess with the keyboard, and it's on me. I've defeated the point of the gloves. So once I'm wearing gloves, I'm imagining I'm wearing gloves, I know that I'm wearing gloves, I am using only those things that I don't mind getting the chemical spread around with. Once that's done, then I'm going to take off my gloves. Now, uh, let's say I need a deal where, okay, I'm, you know, I have to open a door. Well, in that case, you can usually, I'm going to kind of stand up for this one, you can elbow into the doorknob and pull, especially if it's any of the uh, more industrial lever-based ones. Obviously, there's the, you know, you hit it with your backside, what I like to think of as the Mario 64 approach. Or you just make sure you don't need to operate doors. <laughs> That's usually the correct answer. Just try and avoid operating doors or anything else. Uh, another approach is you take off one glove or you only put one glove on, kind of the Michael Jackson approach. In one hand, you you know have one hand at risk, one hand that's unprotected, but you can write with it and that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, so I've done what I need to do with my gloves. My gloves are not dirty. I don't want to just take them off haphazardly. Otherwise, I'm still going to get contaminated. So uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. If you've done any medical you know, CPR training, et cetera, they'll have covered this. Uh, all you have to do is get the glove off without contaminating yourself. So it doesn't matter how you do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab pinch on one end of the glove. I'm going to pull back. I am not going to take the glove 100% off. See how I'm like most of the way off? Pop it. Now I'm going to grab from the inside. I'm going to pull this one off. And then I can nest it in all nice and neat. And bada boom, bada bang. Alternatively... Once again, my hand, when I'm pulling it off, I'm pulling it from the inside of the glove, so I'm only touching the inside. Alternatively, I can walk over a trash can and go thump <laughs> into the trash can, and that works well. Either way, dispose of the gloves, go wash your hands. Uh, that's the other thing with chemistry. Uh, once you're done, wash your hands. It's usually an easy way to spot the chemist. We're the ones that wash our hands before and after going to the restroom. Most people just wait till afterwards, because uh, obviously, you, you know. Now, additional considerations with the gloves are that, one, there are times where I don't want to be wearing gloves. 
if I'm working with flames or with heat sources like hot plates, uh, it is entirely possible for the heat from my heat source to melt the gloves onto my skin. In which case, I would have been a lot better off had I not had the glove. I would have gotten a burn, but at least I wouldn't have molten glove on me. So when I'm working with high heats, uh, I'm either going to wear very specialized gloves or I'm not going to wear gloves. So that'd be hot plates and Bunsen burners. Uh, quite often I'm going to take them off. Now, nitro gloves are not impermeable. Uh, chlorinated solvents are going to go through them fairly quickly. Uh, they will slow them down. So you'll see quite a few cases where folks will wear them and with the realization that you take that glove off immediately if those solvents get on you. Uh, dichloromethane is a classic one, and it's one that will go through the gloves in about 30 seconds uh, or less. So if you get it on your hand, you put the thing down, you take that glove off right away. Okay, uh, so that's a brief rundown on chemicals, per, you know, PPE. Uh, obviously, if you're working with more than just advanced, you know, basic standalone chemicals, you know, the, the stuff that you'd see in a teaching lab, etc., PPE is going to start going up more, 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 uh, depending on how dangerous what you're working with is. <laughs> Personal philosophy, I try and work with only the safe stuff, uh, although the safe stuff still does, you know, I, I've worked with cyanide, I've worked with other things, tiny quantities. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> you respect the chemicals. Also, you never know what the idiot before you did or next to you is going to do. So with that said, ha have a wonderful day. Be safe.